What are you most excited for of this year? That I have a life. Okay, perfect. And then what are you most anxious for this year? For a better life. I'm retired, recently retired, so I'm excited to just relax and enjoy life and be happy. Awesome, and the second question is, what are you most anxious for in this, in this year? Oh, the economy. I can't wait to have some like answers. Uh, 2024 is pretty exciting for me. I've got a company that um, I'm getting funded. I'm most excited for my marketing agency to grow. So I'm kind of in the same line with them. Yeah. That's awesome. And what are you guys most anxious for this year? Mm, it's an election year. So just everything that comes with that. Uh, I'm a parent, so trying to balance. It's trying to make sure that I maintain being a good mom. I'm going on a trip. So where are you going? Mount Zion. <gasps> wow, that's amazing. What are you most anxious for this year? I'm anxious for some uh, health conditions that I'm going through, and I'm praying to God for them to heal. Well, my cataracts are moved, and that's the thing I'm most uh, kind of anticipating or wondering. I'm excited to watch my children grow and learn and develop. I am most anxious for a lot of unexpected things that are happening towards the end of the year. What are you most excited about in 2024? Okay, so it would be giving birth, <laughs> having a baby. This is my first baby. <laughs> Thank you. And then what are you most anxious for in 2024? Having a baby. <laughs> so, uh, because it's my first baby. So, um, and giving birth, because I don't know really what to expect. Real answers, real stories. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Feliz Pascua. <laughs> well, you heard it there. Economy, politics, health, uncertainty. And can we add to that list war around the world, rumors of more wars around the world, pandemic diseases, Pestilence, famines around the world, family turmoil. There's a lot of things we can add to that list. And so as we look into 2024, the biggest question of the day is, do you know the king of peace? Peace is hard to come by in our world today. So do you know the king of peace? the one who speaks peace to so all of this. This Easter, we really wanted to talk about the king of peace. We wanted to talk about peace in the midst of storms. When you think about what does the resurrection mean, what, what, what's the tangible, we know Jesus, it's about Jesus, that he rose from the dead, we know that, but what difference does that make to the cultural moment in which I'm living right now? What does that make a difference to the circumstances in my own life, the stuff I'm walking through. In the Bible, storms or turmoil is often uh, an illustration. Storms is, is how God uses the visuals to help the disciples understand when things are chaotic and things are out of control, who am I in the midst of that to you? And so there's multiple storm narratives in the Bible, and one that we're going to look at today literally was a moment when the disciples saw Jesus for who he is as the Son of God. That's how it ends. And in the midst of it, what he does, he literally walks on the water in the midst of the storm and calls out peace, the King of Peace. The resurrection is a declaration that Jesus indeed is alive. He's alive. Do you know what living means? He's alive. He's alive and living. That means he is available and present. He's not distant and far. He is here and he is ready. He knows what's going on in your life right now. He is alive. And it's a declaration that the circumstances in life, none of those circumstances in life, have authority over Jesus. 
You guys remember Good Friday, right? It's a statement that the darkest, most messed up, even evil, broken, unjust situations in life will not end at the grave. Jesus' story doesn't end at the grave. My story doesn't end at the grave. Your story won't end at the grave. That the hardest things in life, he literally can speak peace to and come in and intervene in the middle of because he's alive. Because he's alive, he is Lord and he is King. I hope, my biggest hope this morning, our biggest hope as we tell this story and bring it to life is that you walk out of here with the king of peace, knowing him, not about him, but knowing him. Knowing how to actually take hold of the hand of the one who says, I am right here, I know what you're going through, you are not alone, now, don't be afraid, because I'm here. In this story, Matthew 14, in this story, we see the first part of this, the storm itself. And from it, we draw some reality, like what does storms, what is a storm, what's it feel like? I can't tell you what storm you're walking through right now, but you know it. But there are certain things that are common to every storm, and we'll see them in the story. So let me pick it up here in verse 22. It says, immediately... Jesus, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Well, he dismissed the crowds, and after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was there alone, but the boat, by this time, was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. This is the backdrop of Jesus being revealed to them as the Son of God and as the one who is above the storms. So what are the characteristics that are common to every storm? Four that just jump right out of these verses at us, and you might find your circumstance right now in the midst of this. The first is it was dark. Storms are dark. It was nighttime. It says it was evening. Later we read it was the third watch. It was 3 a.m. possibly. It's as dark as it gets. And that's what storms feel like. They feel like an oppressive darkness where it is hard to see any light of hope. It's hard to see how to get forward. They're confusing. And not only are they dark, it says, but they rock our security. It says, by this time the boat was far away from land. Now, if you catch the picture of a boat in a storm, you recognize what land represents. Land represents security, it, a stable place. But we find that when storms are raging around us, we find we have no stable ground. Where do we anchor? Where do we stop? That's what storms do, they rock our security. And thirdly, storms feel like an attack. It says that the boat was being beaten by the waves, and the picture there, and the grace is the constant boom, 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 right hand, left hand, uppercut, boom, 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 like being in the ring. That's what storms feel like. Man, you try to get back up, and someone's knocking you down. It's like, what is going on? Anybody ever felt like just like the attack, trying to take you out, trying to sink your boat, your family, your finances? Your health, your future, your hopes, your dreams. And fourthly, every storm makes it difficult to move forward. You feel like, I'm ah, just trying to get forward. It says the wind was against them. Some invisible force is trying to blow them backwards. I'm trying to go that way and just constantly, and that's what storms feel like. Two steps forward, three steps back. Two steps forward, three steps back. Like, come on already. Anybody ever felt like that in life? And so like any time in our lives where we are unsteady, uncertain, we feel unsafe and out of control, what literally rises? This is where all the anxiety, all the fear, all the unsettled, icky feelings on the inside come from. Because there's no 
safe, steady ground to link onto. And that's the state where so many of us find ourselves even today in culture. And we try to medicate to feel better because we can't deal with it. We try to uh, entertain ourselves to ignore it because we just can't face it. It's all around us and we don't know what to do. And I'm telling you, those things won't go away. They just continue to rise around us. So everything happening in our world around us isn't going to change. So what hope do we have? Do you know the king of peace? Do you know the one who can speak peace to the storm and meet you in the moment and take you in an instant from feeling like I'm out of control and at the mercy of everything to I am held. I wish you knew the peace I felt in the hospital room when they said, you've got cancer. I wish I could explain it to you. I wish I could give it to you. The peace that comes in the hardest moments when you see your kids struggling in life. When finances look very bleak. A peace that comes. God shows up. Man, I wish I could give that to you. And in the midst of this, my word or my message today, this morning, that God knows the storm you're in. He knows exactly what it is that is causing anxiety and stress and worry and concern, the stuff you'd like to not face, not acknowledge, things you wish you could medicate away and feel numb from. God knows those things. And he's coming to you right now in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your boat, out in the middle of the sea. He is walking to you. Do you see him? Do you see him this morning? What's causing the anxiety? What is it in life today? Well, the writers and the producers of The Chosen did a fantastic job bringing this story to life. And so instead of talking about it, how, do, how about we watch it? Amen? Let's watch this together. John, keep going! What are you doing? Did anybody just see that? Over there! What are we looking for? I... Go! Go! It's a car! Go! 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 Let's go! It can't be. We have to get out of here! Everyone go! That's not a ghost! Are you crazy?
done for you, Bill. I got you. I have much planned for you, Simon. Including hard things. Just keep your eyes on me. I promise. I'm here. I'm always here. <laughs> Come on, give it to the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Ha resucitado el Señor. Tell your neighbor, he's risen. He's risen. he's risen indeed. Praise the Lord. We're seeing what the Lord does in the middle of the storm. That video shows us that his voice speaks to them. His voice brings peace. His voice gives you that peace that you need in your heart. And I have five minutes, so bear with me real quick. The word of the Lord says in Matthew 14, 25, 27. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, say it immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Tell your neighbor, take heart, tell him, take heart. And my first point is, encourage by greater presence. Because it's amazing though, it says that in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. What a savior we have. Tell your neighbor, what a savior you have. That he came walking in the middle, in the mid-morning crisis, he came to the disciples. Isn't that amazing when we're going through hard times, when, you, when you're going through tribulations, God is going to walk to your life. He's going to come to you in that moment that you need him. I don't know who the Lord is speaking to, but there's people in here that the Lord spoke to you in that mid-crisis that you were going through. You heard the voice of the Lord, and because you heard the voice of the Savior, the King of Peace, you're in this place worshiping God and being, being filled by the Holy Spirit of the Lord. So God is the one that can bring you that peace in the middle of the storm. And the Bible says that they were so afraid. And what a Savior we have. There's someone... That you receive, you, your phone rang in the middle of the night and the Lord showed up in that precise moment. And that's the Savior that we have, that in the middle of the storms, He's going to come and bring that peace that we need, that only Jesus can give you. Encouraged by greater presence, it means that he steps through what I am facing. He steps through whatever you're facing. Um, because the word says that the Lord came in that precise moment. I don't know about you, but I got people that I'm going through hard times in life. When I'm going through the middle of the storm, people tend to wake, walk away from me. But not the Lord. Jesus comes and he steps in in that moment that they're needing. It doesn't matter what time of the day. It doesn't matter what time of the night. But the Lord came. The presence of the Lord came to them and told them, peace be still. So this is the Savior that we have. This is... King Jesus, this is our risen Lord that doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter. God is going to be right there with you in the middle of the storm. Because the one that promised to never leave you, to never forsake you, he's right there in the middle of the storm. Come on, give him praise to the Lord this morning. And you thought you were going alone. And you thought that you were going through that storm by yourself. No, because the one that asked you to go in that boat, the one that asked you to go to the other side, he knows what you're facing. He knows what you're going through. If he told you that you want to make, to make it to the other side, it's because you are going to make it to the other side. Come on, tell your neighbor, you're going to make it to the other side. Come on, tell your neighbor, we're going to make it to the other side. Can someone say hallelujah? 
So encouraged by a greater presence that speaks to your fears. Isn't that amazing? That it speaks to your fears. When you're hearing the voice of the enemy, when you're hearing other voices, the devil is a liar. But when the voice of the King Jesus, the King of Peace comes to, you, to, you, to your heart, he brings that peace that you need in that moment. And it says, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. Say terrified. It is the ghost. And they cried out in fear. And the word that says in the Greek, fear, means agitated. They were agitated. Not only they were so afraid of the storm, not only were they so afraid of the, of the waves, not only they were so afraid of that, but they were afraid of the Lord, of the Savior. And that's what happens when we're going through middle crisis. That's what happens when we're going through trials and tribulations. In Genesis, it says that the Lord created the water. In Exodus, he parked the water. Mark chapter 4, he says that he went to sleep and then he woke up and said, peace be still on the water. So the one that created, the one that walks on the water is going to come and walk whatever storm you're going through. Because he's right there. The king of peace, Jesus is right there. And I came to talk to somebody, do not be afraid of the storms. Do not be afraid. Tell your neighbor, do not be afraid. And I'm closing. The Lord, Jesus, he says, it is I. Say, it is I. And the word says, whatever you're needing, I'm here for you. You need a savior, I am your savior. You need a husband, I'm your husband. You need finances, I have the finances. Whatever you're going through, you need a healer, he's your healer. You need a provider, he's Jehovah Jireh. He will provide for you. You need, a, you need a protection, he's Jehovah Nisi. Whatever you're going through, he says, it is I, it is I. King Jesus says, it is I. Whatever problem you're facing, the Lord is right there with you. He promised not to leave you, never forsake you. If you believe the word of the Lord, say hallelujah and shout and give praises to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. And right now, I'm going to invite Pastor Cammy. He's going to teach you about invitation, inviting. Well, as we continue in Mark 14, we're in verse 28 through 33, and it says this, And Peter answered the Lord and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Peace is not found in the absence of the storm but in the presence of Jesus. We don't know why Peter chose to get out of the boat. We know he was often rash and made quick decisions. Was it one he just didn't think about? Perhaps something within him compelled him to know, that is my master. And where my master is, there is peace. But whatever caused Peter to step out. For a moment, he walked on water. For a moment, he did something that seemed supernatural. But then what happens to all of us in life happened to Peter. And the wind began to blow, and it felt a little unsteady, and the waves began to rise, and perhaps as the rain began to come down in sideways sheets, we saw some of that in the last two days, right? As it came down in sideways sheets, suddenly the picture of Jesus wasn't quite so clear. There was an in-between for Peter. There was a moment between where he stepped out of the boat and he took the hand of the divine. Many of us find ourselves in the storms in the middle. 
When the storms of life come, we begin with the confidence that God has us. Perhaps you feel like, I'm gonna turn a new leaf. This time, I'm gonna do it the right way. This time, I'm gonna do it the way that is better. And yet we find ourselves in an in-between. In the moment where the picture in front of us doesn't seem so clear. When the wind is blowing and beating us down. When the rain and the waves are so strong, it feels like in a moment you might sink. And this is where Peter was. He was in the in-between. Often in the storms of life, when we find ourselves in the in-between, it's hard to have faith that peace is there. Some of you in this room probably have been in those in-between moments and you felt like you failed God because your response wasn't everything you felt like God would want it to be. Perhaps you even said, see, there is no God. I can't find him in this place of in-between. And yet, Peter experienced the exact same thing we get to experience. The hand of the divine immediately when Peter said, help, I'm sinking. The hand of the divine reached into the in-between and took a hold and met him. I want to encourage you. When Jesus says to come to him, all you who are heavy laden, who are burdened, he will meet you even in the in-between. We can have a confidence and a peace that isn't like any other. The world would tell us that peace comes when the storm is calm, when the seas are still. The world would tell us peace comes when you can see the path straight forward. That's when you experience peace. But life is seldom that easy, and life is rarely that straightforward. And so we have a God who steps into the middle of it. We have a God who steps into the in-between and says, I'll calm the storm, and I'll bring peace. In the storms of life, when you find yourself in the in-between, have you reached out? Have you recognized that he's calling you to come? I love the end of this passage because it says, when they got in the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. The peace that we have is like a peace that the world cannot give because he is the son of God. And in your in-between, in the midst of your storms, whether you're in the boat, out of the boat, in the in-between, he is the son of God. And he brings peace that only the son of God can bring. And today, as we come together on Easter to celebrate his death and his resurrection and the new life we have in him, you can take comfort because truly the son of God is the one who brings peace. And he will bring the peace to your in-between. In fact, we see him say in John 14, 27, these are the words of Jesus, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. So let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. In the in-between, he will meet you with a peace that passes all understanding that this world can never understand. He's just inviting you to take the hand of the divine and meet him in the in-between. If that's where you find yourself, the stories that we're gonna hear in just a moment are meant to encourage you to do the same thing. In the in-between, reach out and take the hand of a God who gives peace in the midst of storms. Take a look at this. A while back, I had a friend of mine who ended up in the hospital with a unknown virus that was undiagnosable by any of the doctors. And, you know, he had kidney failure and all sorts of different complications that weren't looking good. A short while after I moved to 
California, I received a call that my childhood best friend had had a massive seizure and was now in a medically induced coma in the ICU and it was getting worse by the day. I decided to book a one-way flight back to New York and I thought I was going to bury my best friend. So my freshman year of college was also the beginning of COVID really just taking effect. But during then was my first year of college baseball. The moment though I got to that field and I got to the school, there was some disconnect going on on the inside. And I started to get very angry that baseball wasn't as fun anymore. And it started to become a chore. And the more I kept just asking God, what, what is going on here? There subtly became on my heart that I'm gonna ask you to walk away from baseball. And the moment I heard that, I was like, anything but that. I felt, you know, a lot of pain and I was anxious. I was angry and I was really confused with why it was happening and to all people like him and his family. But while that was going on, I was, you know, God was able to meet me in the middle of it. And he reminded me that through it all, you know, he's here for us to prosper and he's not here to do harm to us. And I was supported with a lot of prayer and I felt really comforted by how many people were praying for me and for his family. When I got to New York, I was staying in an apartment that my mom had a couple blocks from the hospital. And so one of those nights, my mom looked at me and with incredible discernment, told me, you are trying to do this all in your own strength, and it is too much for you. You need to lean on Jesus. Now, this was everything. I didn't realize how far my identity had gone down with baseball and how much I valued what people thought of me. There's got to be a different way. There has to be, and I'll find it, I'll figure it out, and we'll go from there. And there was a couple months of just trying that and it just got way more miserable. I think I'm gonna try this thing out now that the Lord is saying. The doctors never did figure out what was going on with him, but sometime later he was able to pull through and miraculously got better. The kidney failure stopped, his body returned to normal, and he actually came out stronger than he ever was before. That correction was just what I needed to reorient my eyes on Jesus. And it gave me a peace that sustained me through an incredibly difficult and trying time. Sat down with my coach, I told him what was going on. I said, I'm gonna walk away from baseball. And just leaving that coach's office was just instant peace. All this peace I had never experienced before of what felt like a real true decision that like changed some of my life. I'm grateful that God met me in this situation and taught me that I could trust him through every single storm. On my own, this storm would have been enough to drown me, but it was the outstretched hand of Jesus lifting me up and carrying both me and my friend through to safety. So I'm just so thankful that the Lord took me on this journey, revealing the power of the identity in Christ and a peace and love that is like no other.